Hi, I'm Larry Dapsis. I'm the entomologist with Cape Cod Cooperative Extension, and we talk about our program in terms of a three-phase plan. Protect yourself, protect your yard, and protect your pets. So in this segment, we're going to talk about yard protection. And with respect to yard protection, we're specifically going to talk about perimeter yard sprays. Now, we look at perimeter yard sprays as part of a one-two punch strategy. So permethrin treated clothing and footwear first, and then layer in a perimeter yard spray, and that further reduces our exposure risk. So this is something that you can have commercially done. There are companies here on the Cape that engage in this type of business. And if you go to our website, capecodextension.org, we outline the timing for these things. And in terms of products, there's a couple different choices that you have as a consumer. Um, one is a conventional product that they might use, a product like Talstar, which contains bifenthrin, which is a lot like permethrin. And then you have the choice of an all natural product that might be cedar wood oil or rosemary oil or products like that. Well, the all natural products, unfortunately, they don't deliver the result that you would be needing. Um, they have very low knockdown on contact and once it's dry, it has no residual effect. The other way you can do this is you can do this yourself. Uh, it's pretty simple, you can save yourself some money. So why don't we go outside and just see how easy this is to do. All right, I'm here with Russ Norton. He's our extension horticulturist here. And um, we're out at Russ's house on a beautiful Cape Cod day at the height of tick season. And so what we're gonna discuss today is, is um, how to do a perimeter yard spray for ticks. So, so yard protection is one, one phase of our whole uh, protection plan. So first thing we need to establish is, you know, in a yard setting like this, um, where are the ticks and where aren't the ticks? And so for this, we're surrounded by tick habitat. And so for, for the consideration today, um, we're not going to spray this yard, you know, uh, open grass, direct sunlight, uh, high temperatures, that's hostile environment for ticks. But where we get to an edge, a transition from the edge of the lawn that might be in partial shade, such mm. as this, um, right behind that swing set, um, those, are, those are areas where we're going to find ticks and, and we're looking for ways to reduce our exposure. Now I can see by this swing set, you're obviously a dad. Yeah, got two kids. Two kids, uh, uh, ages? Uh, two and seven. Okay, so, and it's interesting and important for this exercise that kids under age 10 have the highest incidence rate of Lyme disease right. in the state. So what we're gonna do is, is spray the edges of the yard into the transition areas where your kids might kick a ball and be inclined to go and oh, chase yeah. it and so things like that. Most of their time. And um, we're here in the first week of July, and this is the height of nymph stage tick activity. And those nymph stage ticks that are out there down in the leaf litter or in the understory of your ornamental plantings, they're the size of a poppy seed. Mm. And that stage, by virtue of it being that small, is responsible for 85% of all tick-borne diseases. So let's see. We have a product here, then you're gonna demonstrate what it is and, and how to use it. All right, Russ, so you've got a product here that we're gonna to use to do this yard spray. So what do we got here? Well, today we got uh, this Cutter Backyard Bug Control product, which is uh, made with a synthetic pyrethroid. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be using it to do a, a spray along the perimeter edge here. Uh, it's really important whenever you're going to use a product, an insecticide or a fungicide, that you go through and read the label. Okay, start, right, start with the it. label is the law. The label is the law, and you want to go through the whole thing. Read all of it, all the precautions, all the little nuances of uh, when to spray, when not to spray, where to spray. The key with doing uh, spray for ticks is that ticks should be on the label. Yes. And the site for where you're applying it should be on the label. So whether that's ornamental plantings, a perimeter spray, a foundation. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to see those things on the label. So the nice thing I like about this product, Russ, is that you hook it up to your garden hose, basically, and so you don't have to measure anything, you don't have to mix anything. It's about as easy as easy you can get. That's right. These ready-to-use products are great. So um, we'll go ahead and hook it up and uh, find how it's done. So a very simple, quick connect. Yeah, super easy. Open mm. valve. 
good to go. All right, Russ, let's see what this thing can do. All right. So again, we're about three feet outside of the transition zone. Uh, one of the reasons I like these hose end sprayers, Russ, is that um, you can get good penetration down into leaf litter where those little nymph stage ticks reside. Yeah, it's pretty good. It cover the foliage pretty good, right to runoff fairly mm -hmm. quickly, and uh, it's that simple. It's that easy to, to um, make your yard pretty much tick safe. Now, Russ did a great job in showing just how simple it is to do these perimeter yard sprays. Now, what Russ was doing was, as we had talked, he was treating these transition areas, so the edge of the grass um, and then into, you know, where there's brush and taller vegetation and leaf litter, you know, exactly where the ticks might be found. But what Russ would have also done is that he also would have treated these areas, these woody ornamental plantings next to his house. If you think about it, it's just like the other transition zone, so it has, you know, shade leaf litter, lower temperatures, higher humidity. So those are areas you have to treat as well. Uh, there are some other considerations too. Uh, one is that be mindful permethrin is highly toxic to bees. Uh, so what you don't want to do is spray any plants that are in bloom. You do not want to spray on windy days that might have drift off target. So you have to pay attention to when you're going to do these applications. The other thing that um, people should understand is that once that spray dries on the leaf litter, um, the soil particles, it's not going anywhere. Even if you get a heavy rainstorm, it's not going to wash off site. Permethrin's not that water soluble. And as a result, you're not going to have this thing leach into groundwater. At best, permethrin might go about a half inch into the soil profile, and it degrades in about four weeks by soil microbes. So here's my contact information. We're always open for business. I look forward to uh, taking your calls and emails. And we would like to thank Cape Cod Healthcare for their financial support of this project.